Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Durst from Golden Gate Seminary. When Martin Luther King was a very small boy, he lost an argument with his brothers and sisters and went to his mother to complain. He said, Mom, someday I'm going to get me some big words. And he did. This presentation is about eight big words of Christian theology. In fact, there are eight big verbs. Here they are. Elects. God elects, he initiates uh, in order to redeem and save. Uh, two words that are connected with election are predestines and foreknows. I'll talk about those at another occasion. Whom God elects and how God elects, he also calls. Now I put and sends because in Christian theology, in Christian soteriology, whomever God calls, he also sends. Whom God cleanses, he also commissions. Uh, next after calls is convicts and convinces. Uh, so the work of the Spirit comes upon the person called to convince and convict of their need for life and relationship with God. That leads to the process of the Spirit in regenerating, in being born again, in being born anew. Two pieces of that are repentance and faith, often expressed as repentance unto faith. Now the big three words, justifies, sanctifies, glorifies. If you've done much reading in Pauline soteriology, you've seen these three words. But I've inserted a fourth word or verb in here, preserves. Uh, so this uh, saving action of God, uh, he acts to keep persons on track. Which leads me to the track. Here is a visual model of Christian soteriology. Uh, so I pictured... Uh, an election box, and God has chosen uh, the way and the how and the who of saving and making us whole, of redeeming what was lost, being found again. And so God has uh, cast his, uh, his vote in terms of redeeming us. And then as God elects, he also acts in time. So this is before time. God made up his mind. He plans way ahead. But as uh, time is entered, where human beings uh, come into existence and uh, are created and are lost, uh, God calls. This is the work of the Spirit. And typically we speak of the universal God, a call. God wants all to be saved, so he calls all. But it is apparently only effectual for some. Uh, we experience that call in terms of conviction and convincing. I've got two models of this. Uh, taking a view from John Bunyan's great book, Christian's uh, uh, Progress, or Pilgrim's Progress, excuse me. Uh, Pilgrim feels this great burden, this weight of selfishness and sinfulness and rebellion on his back. Uh, another way is looking at it in terms of a com compass. Uh, God's Spirit brings us to the conclusion we are on the wrong track. We are moving in the wrong direction and not the direction God wants us to be going. That leads us to an experience of the cross. And the three, the four key words there are uh, regeneration, which we've spoken of, repentance, faith, meaning putting my complete trust, uh, investing my life. It's not just intellectual, but it's a matter of the life. And the I is for indwelling of the spirit. And uh, I used a very brief graphic here of God taking up residence, that's supposed to be a dove, the Spirit being coming within, and so we really have a new life that's with God. Necessarily then, as we begin to walk in that life, uh, we experience growth and sanctification, development of discipleship, and that's never alone. So I pictured three pilgrims progressing in sanctification and discipleship, learning how to live this life on a daily basis. Practicing faithfully the uh, everyday problems of life as the spirit directs and spiritual disciplines to grow. But on occasion, we will hit a speed bump. We'll fall into a trap. We will lapse into sin. Uh, and necessarily then, God works to preserve that which he's bought for us. Necessarily also, we have people who help us uh, so that we don't leave one another in the gutter, but we keep going. The final piece of this, again, notice, is outside of time. Now, that may be outside of time for us, 
uh, our life is ended. And this last verb glorifies, glorification. Now, I don't know if we actually get wings, but it does say we get a spiritual body that is able uh, to not sin and actually is not able to sin. Uh, it is also uh, eternal uh, in its quality. So we have embodied existence that has continuity of identity, but it amounts to glorification. So here are the eight big verbs in Christian soteriology. I would encourage you to draw your own graphic and see if you can picture salvation and how God is at work in your life in this process.